Hello. As we go through our day, our thoughts can be zooming through our brains at the speed of light, barely slowing down for us to notice them. Or they can be a disorganized mass, tangled like a kitten's ball of string. Or they can be orderly, lined up and clearly defined. Generally, we go through our day with a little of each, don't we? I'm sure by now you've seen the gorilla experiment. It was an experiment at the University of Illinois. A video was shown of a group of people playing basketball, half in black shirts, half in white shirts. Participants were asked to count the number of passes of the ball between those wearing the white shirts. At some point, a person in a gorilla suit walks through the game and, drum roll please, very few people even notice it. They are focused on counting those ball passes. That's what they were there to do. This experiment clearly demonstrates how powerful focused attention is and how easy it is for us to ignore information not important to the task at hand. For many of us, our attention is either turned on or it's not. Although, of course, there are times when we're moving between the two. William James, acknowledged as the godfather of psychology, believed that if you change your attention, you change your experience. He said, millions of items of the outward order are present in my senses, which never properly enter into my experience. Why? Because they hold no interest for me. My experience is what I agree to attend to. In other words, we decide what we will be present with and what we will ignore. But attention is one of our most important assets. We can make a friend feel important by giving them our full attention, as in the listening exercise, or insignificant by ignoring them. There are three main types of attention. Alerting is an instinctive form of attention. That's the one where we're suddenly alert and maybe focused on an opportunity. Do I smell chocolate brownies baking? Or fear, I feel threatened. Conflicting attention demonstrates a conscious effort to focus even under circumstances that are distracting. For example, driving a car through a crowd full of people. You must focus on steering the car while still aware of the crowd. Orienting is another type of attention generally, but not always voluntary. For example, when walking along a busy street and talking to a friend, maybe on your cell phone, we turn to look both ways before crossing, often without even being aware we've done it. We orient all day long, depending on what grabs our attention, both consciously and unconsciously. It's interesting to note that as children, alerting and orienting reach adult levels early while we're still kids but conflict attention continues to develop as we gain greater self-management and control. We all have different levels of conflict attention, and that changes throughout the day, depending on external factors. Noise, alcohol, drugs, stress, all affect our ability to manage our attention. Conflict attention is strongly driven by our reasoning brain, the prefrontal cortex, which regulates decision-making and reasoning. Some of us have an easy time staying focused while others have more difficulty, as in ADHD diagnosis. Mindfulness is a particular way of paying open awareness to our experiences, bringing a certain curiosity, and can, over time, bring more focused awareness to our experiences. Researchers at the University of Oregon found that conflict attention significantly improved with just 20 minutes of meditation practice a day for five days compared to students who did not practice. Since conflict attention is key to self-management, this is really huge news. Now, I know meditation scares people, but if you can look at it as simply paying attention to what's happening right now, open awareness, it can be less so. Mindfulness meditation is also a secular thing. It's not attached to a religion, though many religions do so in the form of prayer, for example. So let's do a quick sit together. Get comfortable wherever you are, sitting, sitting, standing, lying down. Take a breath and turn your attention to that breath. In and out 
However you breathe is totally fine. There is no wrong way to breathe and there is no hurry. Just let your body do what it does and watch it. Now you can close your eyes or not, whatever works for you. Now, bring your attention to what you hear. You don't need to strain or label things. Just hear whatever comes to your ears. Let the sounds fill your ears and be curious about what might come next. No need to think about it or create stories in your head. Simply observe this sound until a new sound comes to you. Sit silently, listening for the sounds that just arise around you. Over time, and with practice, you may find it quite easy to settle into a state of open awareness about what is around you. Try switching it up with awareness of what you see, or what you feel in your body, what it feels like to sit in the chair or stand on the floor. When meditating with focused attention like this, even for relatively short periods of time, you may find that the mind becomes more flexible and resilient, and the ability to stay focused increases until you choose to change it. Many long-term meditators tell me that they experience moments of bliss or even joy while meditating. That's something I gotta work up to. This kind of attention translates into every aspect of our lives. I encourage you to try this. Just five, 10 minutes a day in a quiet place with open awareness. Let me know if you need more help. That's why I'm here. Thank you for listening.